Look who's back. Mic check, <laughs> mic check. The long awaited return of Johnny. We have a mic for the GoPro now, so you gotta make sure this is on. <laughs> All right, we are working on this uh, VRF system, this Mitsubishi. This guy holds 26 pounds about. We found a leak down by the ball joint area before the branch box. We're recovering all the refrigerant and we're gonna be reusing it after our services today. We're almost there. We're so close. Well, I fucked up and uh, I allowed all the gas to go through our compressor and our accumulator and everything behind us here. That was not our intentions. Here, I'll, I'll explain. We've got ball valves inside at the branch box and we have king valves here and our leak is in this line. And so our intention, and you know, look at how shitty all this brazing is. That's how this whole system is. So uh, this whole, like all of these units have shit brazen. This line right here is the one that's the leaker. So our intention was to pull everything down to around five PSI on the recovery side and then like isolate this line and pull a vacuum and, and do the our leak repair and vacuum here. That didn't happen. We have the ball valves closed at the branch box, but this was accidentally left open. So now we're gonna have to vacuum the whole condenser. Not and everything from behind. Not a huge deal, but we'll make this take a little bit longer. So Johnny just wanted to work. Yeah, he did the hours, boys. <laughs> Let's get to brazing. He just told me that these cover with a bag and tape off. So we got our ball valves right here closed. And here. And these uh, indoor units have got to be completely oil logged because that that uh, recovery took forever until we got these ball valves closed off and then it just shot right down. We need to make a how-to braze video for all you guys. <laughs> Everybody watching this, you don't need to learn. It's doing another confirmation where it's at because you know, there's a lot of brazes on this, kind of forgot, but yeah, as you can tell, it's obviously right there, right next to the port pretty much. So that's what we're fixing. We're Nothing sucks more knowing that like, yo, yeah, we'll be done with this in like five minutes, but the whole yeah. process of like recovering, vacuuming, oh, we'll be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> that's like the worst part of it. Hey, that's why people don't like really like getting into service sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is your whole day sometimes. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, we, might, we gotta open these. The ball valves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we already know that they're not holding. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So it's like they're it's leaking through there. Oh, the ball valves themselves aren't a complete sealer right now. Yeah, cause this popped up to 175. Oh. That like you can't even fucking turn them. Like I. Uh, it is dropping, dropping. Like it's like skip counting. I had to spray the inside. Yeah, I did. That's when I heard the bubble. Oh, you can see it now. See the bubbles? Oh, no. I mean, it was dropping pretty quick. Yeah. The bubbles tested at the Schrader, like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, so there's no Schrader in the tool that's in with the T tool? There's no way. There's, there's no way it just randomly started leaking, though. This thing was at, like, holding, like, 200 something PSI. It's pretty, it's dropping pretty quick. This bottom joint on this 90 is sus as fuck. Like half the joint's still on there, but I got no bubbles in it. Yeah. I feel like we would hear this. Yeah, I mean, it's dropping right that much. Yeah, see, this is where our first leak was at, is that corner. You see all that oil, there's evidence it was there. Yeah. We bubbled it up, found it. It seems to be holding higher. I think it might just be a thing with the uh, the system and the pressure's equalizing, gotcha. if I'm being honest. It might just do it kind of funny. I mean, it makes sense. I'm just emptying this whole tank into there, and I'm gonna close this. I, I think that's a past pressure test, in my opinion. I'm cool with that. So, if we wanna start vacuuming, do that. Start vacuuming. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we are having this issue that um, we had this slight drop in pressures, and uh, that's kind of why we're out here is to prevent the drop of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that being said, it's so massive. I mean, it's got to go through this whole system due to my my mess up. You should have just emptied the tank into there. To yeah. Begin. So like, um, I think trying to fucking barely go up, like we were gonna. End up, there's so many valves in this thing that uh, the pressures kind of rest, they kind of settled. So that's kind of comforting for us that 
it reached a good point to kind of stay steady. So that tells us we're on the right track. Yeah, I, I'm not a, I know we've, we fixed the, the leak that we knew was happening. If there's a micro leak in this thing, which it's not even, it's not dropping anymore. We do have another tank of nitro. We could, we might pump it up a little bit more. We'll see, but. We are vacuuming this thing down right now. Um, it's probably been like eh, in between 10, uh, about 10 minutes. Um, so it's still, it's pulling down, but obviously it's gonna take a minute. We're gonna break it about three times. Hopefully uh, it won't be like a four hour ordeal or anything like that, but we shall see. We are actually gonna take off for the day. We're at 3780. This guy's just kind of taking its sweet ass time to be vacuuming down right now. Um, we've been pulling it for like three hours. We broke it like a few times. Um, I think the op most optimal use of our time and like just for this system. Um, we're just gonna let this guy pull overnight. I think we'd be here. I see even went up to 3,800 right now. Just like, it's kind of going back and forth. Well, oh, I was blocking it off. Uh, that's probably why. Um, but yeah, just the more optimal use of our time and just uh, probably just better for the system anyways. Just pull it overnight. Let it do the same for like the next like, I don't know, 12, like 12 hours. We'll probably be back here like around eight in the morning, nine at the latest. Um, see where this guy's at and then actually add the refrigerant because yeah we'd be here like probably until like at least like 10 p.m like seven in between 7 to 10 p.m and that'd be just to finish the vacuum I mean, then we got to add the refrigerant and we're like yeah might as well just like get get out of here and let this just let this guy do its thing so we're gonna let that guy do its thing um but yeah we'll be back in the morning all righty here we are back in the morning so like i said it probably did take a long time to vacuum down we're at 8 30. um honestly i don't think we're gonna really get that much better it's been since four o'clock p.m yesterday and now it's literally 9 a.m today on the next day so i mean this thing has been pulling for more than 12 hours as of right now so honestly if i'm being real like 8.30 might be the best hour again. It's probably been sitting at 8.30 for forever, if I'm being honest. Like, this thing's like so big that I'd be surprised. Like, we're at least under a thousand. That's like more important than anything. So, we are gonna start um, adding the refrigerant that we recovered uh, from the system, using the recovery machine and getting it back into the system. And uh, so yeah, that's the next step. We are almost done. Uh, getting the refrigerant back into the system. This is actually a lot more faster of a process than uh, we were kind of thinking. We, we thought it'd take almost like a couple hours just to get the refrigerant back into the system, but it did not take any time to uh, add this refrigerant back into the system. Alrighty, we are on the refrigerant adding portion of this. Cancel that out to zero it out. Uh, I'm just gonna be filling this guy up. Um, if it drinks it, it drinks it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, we're gonna probably add like in between, like no doubt about like in between five to 10 pounds of refrigerant. Uh, and we're gonna go downstairs and test these systems uh, for uh, cooling and pr we'll probably even test the heating since we're here um, to be able to, you know, cause honestly this morning it was like a little under 60 degrees. So no doubt they're not even like using the AC once they get home from work or whatever it is. So uh, this thing's probably gonna start working, uh, be running and heating. So might as well start checking, checking that shit. We uh, kind of ran into a little hiccup before adding the refrigerant. We got the vacuum pump out now. Forgot to uh, open up the keen valves. So all night last night, like the condenser actually wasn't getting pumped down. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. So luckily it's not taking too long. We're like. We've probably been pulling for like maybe like 20 to 30 minutes and we're like right here, so. All right, our system is up and running. We got the condenser all vacuumed down. Uh, we let the refrigerant flow in the condenser. Uh, this guy is up and running. It's cooling down below. Um, See, so yeah, a little bit of a hiccup, you know, but what is it on a VRF system, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but luckily that condenser really didn't take long. It only took like maybe like an hour and a half to break it down with a like a triple breaking it, vacuuming it down, everything like that. So kind of got, we were a little bit on the lucky side for that. That could have been a all day ordeal, unfortunately, but luckily it was not. So, um, you know, lesson learned, you know, that's how you get better at this shit. We tested in heating as well for them down below just to make sure they were all good. So signing off. If you made it this far in the video, you really should subscribe. Uh, also, 
yeah, a bunch of things went wrong on this repair, but nothing like horribly wrong. I was, I thought for sure that this thing needed oil traps, but I actually consulted the install manual. It says, do not install traps. I know people are gonna say we need to uh, improve our recovery set up trust me i know i know the two ball valves on the branch box one of them we don't know which one but one of them didn't hold pressure so we had it fully seated in there and it let a bunch of refrigerant blow by it. uh as far as thinking it was leaking we had everything wide open on our end is some solenoid valves there's obviously eevs we knew it would take a while to equalize but it ended up taking like a whole tank of nitro before it even started getting close to like equalizing in a way where we could tell, but before we started pulling up vacuum, we got it up over 200. I didn't show that part on video, but I think we got it to like 220 and it was just holding real steady. We have some pretty cool videos, in my opinion, we're about to put out in the next, I don't know, probably two or three weeks. We charged 4,400 bucks for this repair, 43 something. I wanted to do an hourly rate on it and bill them, but uh, apparently like it's a HOA, so for approval, they have to have a fixed rate. I thought we quoted it kind of high, but within what was reasonable, I was really hoping we could knock it out real quick and then we would have come out way on top if that ball valve had closed we would have made a killing on it because we could have been done in like hours we could have left a little bit of refrigerant and all those other ones we do not know how much refrigerant this system holds we have 50 pounds in there on the dot right now and um we we were not successful in getting the diamond system builder from mitsubishi that tells us exactly how much refrigerant is in that system um we don't have access to all the piping so we can't really measure it and so yeah we have we have no idea if it's got the proper charge it had, we pulled out 40 we put an extra 10 back in so we, we pulled out 40.1 we put in 10.0 so it's got 50.1 pounds in there right now the building in this case didn't want to pay us to do a full leak search so we didn't know for sure if it wasn't leaking we still don't know for sure if there's no other leaks they didn't want to pay us to do a leak search they really i mean they didn't want to pay us to do very much except for fix that leak so we went out there and we, we fixed that leak. Um, if they don't want to pay us to do more, we won't do more. So we know uh, it did hold, under, uh, it like pulled down to about uh, 800 and then it did not rise when Alex shut shut off the, the vacuum. So we know it was holding under a thousand and um, on a system that big that, that's got that much oil in the evaporator coils, I don't know that it's gonna, <laughs> It's gonna take, it's gonna be difficult to pull down real low. So, all right, well, uh, take it easy. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day.